this video, we'll overview managing jobs and work orders with Service CEO. There are many ways to begin a job and many ways to schedule a job. First, let's overview a couple of brief tips from the dispatch board. We want to point out these three lists down at the bottom. The first is our unassigned work orders list. If, for example, this job here for the Anderson family had not yet been scheduled to an employee, it would be sitting down here in the unassigned work orders list. This is red. It means that you have a work order that is scheduled for today. The unassigned work order queue only shows things that are scheduled for the day you're looking at on the dispatch board. This means that it's been scheduled but hasn't been assigned to one of your employees yet. We'll simply drag this up onto the dispatch board to schedule it here. The next list down is unscheduled work orders. These work orders can be unscheduled for a variety of reasons. However, the common thread here is going to be that this work order has been created, but it does not have a start date yet. This means that the work order is sitting in here. You can see the sub status, the customer's name, the duration of this work order, the service location, and the summary. Clicking this summary link will open the work order in view mode. You can also click this blue bar here to see more information on the work order, such as the customer's information, the customer's contact information down here, as well as information on the service location as well. To open the work order, you click View Work Order. You also have the ability to print or email a copy of the work order or invoice directly from here by using these links off on the right. To schedule an unscheduled work order, we simply drag the job up drop it on the calendar. Note that as we move a bar across the calendar, the green text above the bar changes. This is to indicate exactly what time we've dragged this job to right now. This is a white shell now. We have a key here that says, what do the colors and icons mean? A white shell means that there is no duration. Keep in mind you can change these three colors through the jobs and work order settings in the settings menu. However, when we have no duration, it's usually helpful to block off an appropriate amount of time. We do this by hovering the mouse over the right side of this, holding down, and simply dragging out as long as we'd like to schedule this work order for. Finally, we have an earlier opening request queue. This is a list of work orders that have not been completed that the customer has requested an earlier opening. So for example, if an appointment is scheduled two weeks out from now, but the customer asks that you come out if you have any cancellations or any openings, we can check off the earlier opening request checkbox. And we'll show you where that is in just a minute. This will sit down here in this list. So if, for example, all Sandy has on her calendar today is this job for the Amazon family, we may be able to fit something else down here into her calendar. If you do want to schedule something, you can always get your customer's contact information. First, make the phone call and if they are able to be there for this work to be done today, we can simply drag this right up onto the dispatch board and schedule it. Now let's go through the process of entering in a new work order. There are many ways to do this. The first way that we'll show you is if you already know what time it's going to happen and who you want to assign to it. This is by simply clicking a cell here in the dispatch board. By clicking here, it's going to start a job at 1 o'clock, assigned to Jeff. So I'll click here and ask me, A, to confirm that I want to schedule it at 1 o'clock on this date, and B, whether it's a job or a sales call. If you'd like to schedule a sales call as part of the estimate process, you can absolutely do so. Make sure you check out the on-site sales call training video for more information on that. For this example, we'll call it a job. We hit OK here, and it brings us to the customer screen. We can either add in a new customer or select a customer that we already have on file. You can search by the name, phone number, as well as the default service location and service contact here. We'll choose Andy Pettit for this example. Once you've selected the customer, it brings you over to your job wizard. There are four tabs here, job information, work order, invoice, and payments. But for scheduling, you will need to work with the first two tabs here. On the first tab, job information, only necessary field is a summary. This is a brief description of the work you're going out there to do. 
business unit you shouldn't have to update if you're using business unit functionality here although the substatus typically is a very useful thing to use to track where this job is at in its life cycle as well as to plan out any next steps so if, for example I need to make a confirmation call to Andy Pettit I'll select that I need the confirmation call and I'll be sure to set up a work order list to show me my confirmation calls that I need. The marketing campaign may have been filled out on the customer record, however, if you forgot or if it wasn't, you can always select the marketing campaign here. Note that these custom fields are just here as display to remind you that you can build custom fields if you like. So keep in mind you can build as many custom fields as you like here. If the job will have more than one work order, I can fill this out here and it will allow me to have one job with multiple work orders that still culminate in one invoice. Also if the job is going to recur, say every other week or every other month or the first Thursday of May every year, we can do so down below. We'll demonstrate those in just a bit. As you scroll down there are private notes that you can fill out here, but at this point we're going to go ahead and hit next. Hitting next in previous is a great way to navigate around the system because it will save the page that you're on and bring you to the next place in the workflow. So from here when I hit next, it saves my job itself and now it brings me to the work order. Note that you can see here I'm on work order 455-1. This means that the job that we're on is job number 455 and that this is the first work order that's part of that job. Most of your information has already been filled out from here. We have our summary, we have our customer, and our substatus. The business unit location and contact have all been filled out. However, we do want to block off a duration. Let's say that this is going to be a three hour carpet clean. We can simply type three in here, click out to update. If you want to go incremental, three and a half hours, you would have to do three colon 30, 3.5 will not work. The arrival window is how long outside of 1 o'clock you may be there. So if, for example, you keep it at 1 o'clock, you're saying to the customer, we'll be there at some point between 12 and 2. It's the arrival window on either side of the start time. And then here is where your earlier opening request checkbox is that we discussed earlier. Next down here, we've got our charges. We can add in our products, our services, or our kits. These are covered in more depth in the product services training video. However, for this example, we'll go ahead and put in our carpet cleaning rate here. Our hourly rate is $30. If I wanted to put one hour on, I would simply click this green plus symbol. However, since I want to charge for three and a half hours, I'm going to hit this, our add and edit button. This lets me make one-time changes to things like the quantity for this charge. It allows me to make things taxable if I have not made them taxable or vice versa allows me to change the description and it also allows me to put a discount on here for this customer so if I wanted to give this customer a 5% discount I would do so here. We'll hit OK to get this updated. You can see with the discount this totals to $99.75. Finally down below, Jeff has already been assigned because of the way we scheduled this from the dispatch board. I could add other employee assignments here as well. If you were to have a scenario where two employees would be splitting the length of a job, so for example, Jeff and Oscar are both on the job, but Jeff is going to leave at 2.30 and Oscar is going to stay from 2.30 to 4.30, I can edit their hours here. So I could actually come in here and say that Jeff is only here from 1 to 2.30, but Oscar will be here from 2.30 to 4.30. This has now split these three and a half hours across Jeff and Oscar. We'll see what this does on the dispatch board in just a second. Finally, we have notes. As we discussed in the customer contact and location record keeping video, you could have already put notes here on the customer page that would show on every work order you do for them, or notes on the service location that would show on every work order you do at this service location. You can also put in one-time notes here on the work order notes that are specific to this one work order. These will print on the work order as well as the wrap sheets for your employees. Finally, you can store private notes here if you'd like to. To finish this, we'll simply hit save. This has now created my work order from 1 to 4.30 on the first, split between Jeff and Oscar. 
So if we come back to the dispatch board here, you can see that this work order here, work order 555-1, is assigned to both Jeff and Oscar on the dispatch board. Now, let's set up a job for tomorrow with two work orders, one for Thursday and one for Friday. We'll move the dispatch board forward to Thursday. In this scenario, we don't know what time, or rather, we don't know which employee we want to assign to this work order. Another way to add a job, rather than clicking in here, is to use our Common Actions button and to click Add Job from here. This does not select an employee or a time, but everything else functions the same way. We'll hit Add Job. For this scenario, we'll choose CC Sabathia here. Let's say we're going to install a roof, and it's going to be a two-day job. So I know that this job is going to have two work orders right off the bat. What I'm going to do here is simply put in a summary and the number, and then hit Next. It's just saving my job, and it's creating the first work order as part of this job. Now because I'm scheduling this way, I need to choose the start date. I'm going to choose Thursday, July 2nd, and we're going to work on this from 7 to 3.30 on that day. And we're going to skip the charges for this scenario here, and that will add an employee. One of, the, one of the benefits of doing it this way is that you can figure out who's available for that job. When I click Add Employee, off on the right I have an availability drop down. When I click Availability, I can see that Jeff is actually busy in the morning and the afternoon, so Jeff is probably not the best person to do this job. Now let's take a look at Oscar's calendar. Oscar is wide open. We'll go ahead and assign this to Oscar. This is our first work order for Oscar. Now we're going to go ahead and press Next. Because there are two work orders on this job, this tab here is now plural says work orders, whereas last time it just said work order. When I hit next now, it's going to bring me to 456-2, the second work order on this job. I'm going to then schedule the second work order out on Friday from 7 to 3.30 here. We will scroll down here, and since Oscar is doing the first one, let's just make sure Oscar's available. Oh, Oscar's not available that second day here, but Jeff is. So we'll send Jeff out instead. I'm going to go ahead and save this now and show you two things. First, we'll hop back to the dispatch board. You can see that on Thursday, this job for CC Sabathia's roof install is here on Oscar's calendar, but on Friday, it's on Jeff's calendar. Next, let's go back into the work order to show you another feature that you didn't have before. Again, when there are multiple work orders on one job, this tab turns plural and it's also clickable. So if I click here, I'll see a list of all of the work orders that are on this project. If I need to add a third day, I can simply click Add Work Order and it will create the third work order on this job. I also have the ability to copy the work order. When you copy a work order, it's nice because you'll keep all of your notes and information, but you do want to be very aware that you are changing the date. So I'm going to hit copy on this fast work order. Again, everything is the same right now. So I want to move this forward to Saturday. Now we know Jeff doesn't normally work on Saturdays and we're going to pay him overtime. So we don't need to check our employee assignments. Now when we go ahead and hit save, we've got a third day on this work order. And as we come back to the dispatch board here, move forward to Saturday. You can see that Jeff now has another work order for CC Sabathia here on his calendar. Once you've finished the work order, you need to close it to mark into the system that you're done with the work and that you're now owed money on that job. Let's use this work order for Derek Cheater as an example. There are ways to batch close work orders and ways to close work orders one at a time. First we'll show you one at a time and then we'll show you batch. To do so, we're going to open the work order Completing a work order is as simple as clicking Edit and changing the status here on the left from Open to Closed. As soon as you make it closed and press Save, the system is going to issue an invoice as of the end date for the work order here. 
Now, this is all covered in much more depth in the invoicing training video. However, just to show you, when we come over to your invoice here, the issue date is now 6-6. We have a 15-day default, so the money is due on the 21st, and it's sitting here unpaid. If we were paid on the spot, we could always come into our payments tab here, add in a payment, we'll select the payment type, maybe Derek gave us cash on this day here, and press save. Doing this has just completed the job. This is now revenue that is in the books. You can also batch closed work orders, meaning close more than one at a time. You really only want to do this when you know that the price is correct and when you're not doing things like tracking your employees' hours with the start and end time frames here. Batch closing doesn't allow you to make changes during the close. However, you can come in through your work orders tab and you can batch close open jobs. So here I have a custom view for all of my open work orders in this system. If I wanted to close a couple of these, I can check the box next to them here. For example, I want to close these five. And I can hit my common actions button and from here simply click close work orders. This is going to close those work orders that we've selected. And if there's a price on there, it will assign an issue date that's the last date that that work order ran on. So even if you have a work order the last two days, it will be issued as of the date it was completed. Now let's look at building and using custom views within the work orders tab. Custom views are a really good way to give yourself a smaller list of data points. In the work orders tab, you get a list of work orders that meet the criteria of your choosing. But keep in mind you can set up custom views in any of the tabs across the top other than reports, settings, and the home tab. The filter options are different in each of these tabs. We'll click new view to set up a new view. First let's review our filter options and then we'll set up a list. Our first option is business units. This allows me to only show work orders assigned to a particular business unit. So if I only wanted to see Boston, I would simply check Boston only. Assignments lets me filter by who's assigned to the work order. I can show or not show unassigned work orders show stuff for a particular employee or a particular group of employees here and choose a team or a group of teams to show from here as well. Next I can filter by the jobs type which is a job with one work order, a job with multiple work orders, a recurring job like we just demonstrated, or an on-site sales call list. You can also filter by our sub statuses here. This is what we'll be doing for the example but essentially, if you only wanted open work orders, you would leave your open substatuses alone and you would uncheck all of your canceled and all of your closed work orders. You can also only have a particular substatus checked off as well. On the work order start date, you have the option of choosing date range manually by clicking in here and choosing a date range. Or you can use our smart rolling date filters. These are very helpful because if you're using a smart date filter and name the views as such so that you know, you don't have to come in here and change the date range every single time. We'll click down to service locations to show you. Once you've selected a filter option, it puts an asterisk next to that filter option. So I know that I've chose something on work order start date here. Let's just change this back to all days. I can also filter by the service location, the city, state, or zip code, as well as the zone that the particular work order is in. And I can filter by custom fields on any of the pages that you see here. Now let's do an example. Let's set up a list of confirmation calls that we need to make for tomorrow. So we're going to give this a name, confirmation calls for tomorrow. This is simply going to be a list of work orders that are scheduled tomorrow that require a confirmation call. So first I'm going to pick tomorrow's date range in the work order start date filter. Choose tomorrow. By choosing tomorrow, always going to be the next calendar day. This doesn't need to be updated. Now we're going to do the status. I don't want to see anything that's closed or anything that's been canceled in this list. I only want open work orders that have a confirmation call needed substatus on them. If I have business units in this system and I'd like to share this view with the lower business units, I would check this box. I'll hit save and we'll see if there are any work orders tomorrow that need a confirmation call. There's one for CC Sabathia here. 
So what I would do is click this link here that'll open the work order, click this contact info card to open CC's phone number here, and then once I speak to him and confirm that we're going to be there around 7 o'clock tomorrow, I'll simply click edit here and change the substatus. Again, changing the substatus will knock this out of that list. So now that I've confirmed it, we'll change it to say confirmed and hit save. And now when I come back up to the work orders list here, that work order is no longer in it because it no longer meets the criteria. Now we'll schedule a recurring job in Service CEO. We'll be on the dispatch board and we'll click Common Actions, Add Job. Again, I have to select a customer or add in a new one here. We'll select Derek Jeter for this example. For this example, we're going to set up a bi-weekly cleaning for Derek every other Monday. If I want to call ahead every other Monday just to make sure that Derek knows, I can do confirmation call needed as my substatus. This allows me to set up lists of the next day's confirmation calls, which we'll demonstrate in a minute. For this scenario, the job is recurring. So I'm going to click Add Recurrence down here. This gives me the frequency options that I'm looking for. There are many different options. Daily allows you to say, for example, every two days would be every other day. It will create an identical work order. Weekly allows me to say every one week, every two weeks, and then pick the day of the week that it falls on here. Monthly day of the month allows me to say something like every third month on the first day of the month or the last day of the month here. Well, monthly week of month lets you get a little bit more advanced. Instead of just saying the first day, you could say every month on the first Monday, we're going to set up a time to go out and clean your house. Coming down annually day of month again allows you to say every year on a particular day of a particular month here, every year on January 6th, versus annual week of month, which again lets you say every year on, for example, the very first Monday in January, we're going to come out and service you. Finally, you can pick a custom date range, which allows you to actually manually pick the dates that this job will recur on. So if, for example, this job is going to recur in June, and then it's going to pop up again in July. I would set it up like this, and I can always come in and add other recurrences to make sure that this job continues to go. But for this example, since it's a bi-weekly cleaning, we're going to say that it's every two weeks, and we're going to go with Monday as our service date here. Note that we also have a start date. This is the day that the job's recurrence begins on. So if this isn't going to start until July, you would want to make sure you choose this date, July 1st, as opposed to June 1st here. And where it ends, you have the choice between after, which allows you to say after a certain number of visits. So if it's going to be every two weeks on Monday, and they've only paid for 20 visits up front, we could say that this ends after 20 visits. You could also end it on a particular date as well. So if, for example, it's a one-year contract, I might want to end this on June 1st of next year. For this scenario, we'll go back to never. Here, all we've done is set up a summary, we've used a substatus, and we've set up a frequency. Now we're going to hit next, and we're in a work order template now. Keep in mind this is a template, so your Designing a template that's going to repeat every other Monday. In this scenario, we're at Derek Jeter's mansion from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock every other Monday. There is no arrival window, and there's no early opening request because we're going to be there. Here you're going to put the price that you're actually charging every other Monday. So, for example, if we charge Derek an hourly rate of $75 an hour, and we're charging six hours here, we may use our carpet cleaning service, for example. But again, our edit button allows us to customize the unit charge for this one particular job only. These changes are not changing the price book behind the scenes. These are only for this one recurring job. Finally, I'm going to assign an employee. 
best practice is definitely to assign an employee, although we understand the variability of a lot of services business and that sometimes it's just not possible to always assign an employee. So what we'll do for this example is not assign an employee here so that every other Monday there will be an unscheduled work order that you'll need to schedule on the calendar. Finally, you may want to come down here if you have a checklist or any special instructions from the client. If you hadn't put them on the customer record in those work order notes, you may put them here in the work order notes. This will print on every single work order that's part of this recurring job template. Here, we'll just call it recurring notes. Finally, we'll simply click Save. And we've now set up a recurring job every other Monday for Derek Jeter. We'll go ahead and click on do his name here for a second so that we can see our upcoming work orders list here. We can see his first cleaning is on the 6th, the next is the 20th, and then the one after that is on the 4th. So if we come back to our dispatch board here, and we roll forward to Monday the 6th, again, we kept that on assigned. So now we have a work order here for Derek Jeter with our confirmation call needed substatus like we set up earlier on the schedule unassigned. From here, I'll simply drag it up onto the calendar. I let go too early, so we'll drag it right up on here. Keep in mind, you do have the ability to schedule from an unassigned work order to a different time, so be very aware that you are choosing the proper time if you're using drag and drop scheduling. You also have the ability to make one-time changes to this work order, to the length or the price. I'm going to click into this work order by clicking View Work Order. You can see on the right that the work order number is 457-1. When you see a work order number, anything you make, any changes or edits you make are specific just to that one work order on that one day. If you wish to change the template to, for example, charge more or assign an employee permanently or add more time to this, you'll click this link here that says this job is part of a recurring job. Click here to view the template. By clicking this, you're going to open your recurring job, and then you can come over to the work order within the recurring job template and make any changes that you'd like. This concludes the training video on managing jobs and work orders within Service CEO. If you have any questions or could use any help with this, please be sure to discuss them with your customer success manager or to contact our technical support team.